Nou, dat betwijfel ik. Het was niet echt dat je zegt van een uh, enthousiast publiek meteen daardoor. Nee, nee ik snap het. Het is anders ja. niet. Ja, dus ik denk dan ook maar niet dat het naar Voice moet gaan. De Voice of Tido, ik slaat me niet in. Oh, ja. De social event volgend jaar, de Voice of Tido. Is gewoon karaoke bar erbij. Met, uh, ja, ik kijk, ik zie enthousiaste reacties die gaan zingen, dus volgend jaar, dat weet je wel. Wie weet het? <laughs> hey, heb jij katten thuis? Ik heb nou zo'n, 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 zo'n laserpointer hier, nee. dan kun je die katten helemaal gek mee maken. Ik heb nog iemand, nog iemand, die zo beleefd is om niet in onze ogen te schijnen, dat vind ik wel fijn. Ja. Oké. Ik heb jouw ding nodig, hè? Ja. Ik heb een persoonlijke microfoon. Ah, oké. Jeroen. Goed. Welkom. Good morning everybody. We are here at the 12th Tito's. Uh, we want to thank all the sponsors to make this happening. You've seen them outside in the central hall. Um, there are a couple of things I'd like to uh, say about the uh, um, schedule for today. We have uh, on the left here, we have uh, something new, playful programming, spelend leren in Nederlands. Uh, just go and visit, it's funny, it's for a whole day, you can play, yeah, programming in real life, so just check it out, I think it's, it's wonderful. It's uh, uh, organized by the NLGG, so, and they are uh, having their own track on the first floor this afternoon. Oh, to already now, actually. And we also have on the first floor in the afternoon snow track. So uh, the snow IT uh, sponsors a track at the, the first floor. And it's got uh, this afternoon got a couple of terrific talks. Also, today we have LPI, LPI exams in the afternoon. And we have in the afternoon privacy cafe uh, on the, in the right track. Uh, I would appreciate that people uh, turn off their mobiles, at least, the sound while attending a talk. Especially for the speakers. It's nothing more irritating than a speaker that's getting cold and answers a phone. Then I would like to have a big applause for Jeroen, Jeroen Bate, which talks on Tito's almost every year. So give him a warm hand. Well, thanks. Okay. Um. Okay, so, um, welcome everybody. Um, uh, this year I uh, entered three talk ideas uh, into the Tito's uh, uh, abstract uh, uh, list and they even got all three accepted. So uh, if you stay whole, the whole weekend, you'll see a lot of me, unfortunately. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, with uh, a little bit of uh, merchandising my other talks. Uh, the other one is on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. If you're awake by then, I'll. What do I talk about? Um, uh, the document. Mm. Oh yeah, uh, ANBS, what an ANBS should be. It doesn't exist, but what it should be. That's the talk in the morning. And at four o'clock, I'll do a talk about mainframe on, on Linux. So that's, that's pretty cool to, uh, I'm, as you can see, I'm always enthusiastic, so I'm also very enthusiastic about that. But this day, today, uh, I got the slot of 10 o'clock. I'm not the keynote, by the way. The keynote is after me. Uh, there's so uh, weird planning uh, stuff. Um, Anyway, um, I, I was thinking about document workflow within the Dutch government, and I'm not an expert, I'm just a citizen. If you want to talk about 
sitting over there, uh, but uh, she probably remains anonymous for the rest of the session. Um, so who am I? Uh, my name is uh, uh, Jerome Bata. Uh, by the way, is there somebody who doesn't understand Dutch? I'll just switch to Dutch then. Okay, no, okay, so I'll stay in English, no problem. Uh, thank God you're not French, or maybe you are, but uh, my French is uh, uh, le niveau est fair. The, that's it. Um, anyway, so uh, my name is Jerome Betton. I've been in IT for, uh, since I was 15 years old. 15 years old, I'm now in my 50s. Uh, 15 years old. And I call myself a solutionist. So I solve problems. Um, and uh, there is this, um, there was once a sick on the internet saying, true technological the solutions are indistinguishable from magic. So that's an illusionist and then I'm a solutionist. Get it? Um, anyway, so this is pictures. Uh, I even have a laser pointer this year, so uh, I do some stuff in scouting. Combined with another hobby that I did that you see below there, I've been a fireman for, volunteer fireman for 10 years. Um, so I rescued a dog who was swimming. Long story, he was in danger, believe me. Um, and uh, uh, sometimes it's get hot, which uh, you can see by the right side, uh, bottom side, my helmet, the, the, uh, the visor was melted. So it, it was a little hot, but it was, uh, <laughs> it was an exercise. Um, anyway, uh, and, oh yeah, and I have um, a, a car with a, a clearly a tux logo on it. It's a wheelchair adapted car, but it's a whole other. Um, so, Back to the subject. Um, government does a lot of document workflow. Um, registration of birth, marriage, uh, uh, notary registration of, of sale and purchases of housing uh, or whatever. Um, uh, judicial documents, you know, when a judge says, well, I, the verdict is 10 years in prison or whatever, those kind of stuff you, you, you publicize. But when you publicize, you more or less anonymize, but nevertheless, it's public uh, uh, information. And so there's a lot of documents going on, and they are all signed. Now, this signature, that's something I'm going to talk about. Um, and I hope it's not going to be boring. Anyway, at the end, I have a demo, so there's even some software involved, that, just to keep you awake, right? Um, it starts with what is GPG? It's a GNU General uh, a GNU Pub, a Privacy Guard, and it's secure digital uh, signature software. So you can sign emails, you can sign documents, you can encrypt emails, you can encrypt documents and decrypt. It uses public key encryption. So um, for the, the, the people who, are, is there anybody who doesn't know what GPG is? I thought that much. Okay, so that, that, that makes my talk a whole lot uh, shorter. Um, so I'm not going to explain how GPG works because I think that you know how it works. If you don't, just look me up uh, later. Um, the signature history, though, that, that's interesting. I looked this up, um, and it, it turns out that uh, so written language started some 3,000 uh, years BC, um, but there was no signature uh, at that time. I mean, uh, uh, being a pharaoh, you could make your uh, icon uh, a pyramid, but that was not considered a signature yet, just your coffin. Um, so the first signature was uh, around uh, 1000 B, uh, uh, after Christ. Um, and um, even then, it's, it's the f what we now consider to be the first more or less official signature from a, a Spanish nobleman called uh, El Cid. In 1677, um, the UK uh, was really uh, using signatures on a lot of documents and even put it into law, the statute of frauds, to uh, say that if you falsify a signature, you would be liable, which is, of course, logical to, to, to put into law if you depend on, on, on signatures being authentic. Um, there were even uh, telegraphs where uh, uh, they, they introduced some sort of digital signage saying, okay, this is a signature, I vouch that this is the person sending this telegraph. So the receiving end should more or less believe that what the sending end is saying. But, you know, we don't live in the world of telegraphs anymore. 
Um, in the 80s, a fax was considered legal if you put a signature on it. So uh, even though it was uh, scanned on one machine, digitally sent to the other end, and then printed, uh, so it's sort of a remote printer in a way. But um, um, nevertheless, it, it was accepted by law to be an officially signed document. Um, so in the 2000s, you got a lot of the rise of digital signature software. So there are some suppliers selling uh, products to be able to sign a document. Now, I think as a citizen, that's a bad idea. And uh, if you can't guess why, uh, well, maybe it helps if they start charging you for signing a document, like a stamp. And so it starts with 50 cents. To, to and yeah, but because well, I want to see your passport, I want to verify that it's you. Uh, okay, so my passport, you're relying on somebody else's signature in a way. Um, and um, signing a document is so essential and crucial to the working of, of a society that uh, you should really reconsider if you want to put that in the hands of. Uh, a commercial supplier, unless he's using an open, completely open standard, that's something else. Yeah, it's an open standard, so everybody can join in, that's fine. If it's not, if it's a closed uh, uh, private uh, uh, product, avoid it like the plague. That's my view, anyway. Um, so in the 2008, they started with this thing called a blockchain, Bitcoin, and it was money, it was worthless at that time. Um, and, uh, well, you know, what, what could I do with it? Well, it turns out that um, if I use a, a GPG example, well, you know how this works. So I can skip this um, and go to the blockchain. It's basically, who, who knows, who doesn't know what a blockchain is? Okay, a few people. So let me explain that then, uh, and I'll make it simple. Um, so a blockchain is a piece of software that relies heavily on encryption. And um, basically what it is, it's a database where you store blocks of information. So it's block in, and you can retrieve it, but when you add a block, it's signed with a digital signature, a hash, that is dependent on the block before. So you get a chain of blocks all signed by the previous block. So if you mutilate, change a block in the middle, you can see that because it, it, it doesn't validate anymore the digital signature. Uh, so this makes it a, a pent only database in a way. Now, there are some other characteristics to a blockchain. For one, it's distributed. So somebody has a blockchain server running somewhere and, and somebody else can connect to that. And then you get a copy of his database, let's call it a database, but you know, of the blockchain. And in those, that blockchain, in those blocks, what you can do, and I'm not doing that in this uh, demonstration, but what you can do, what's very popular, is to add financial transactions. So you say, okay, I add this much of this currency, or I subscribe, uh, uh, subtract uh, uh, this much of this currency, and those transactions are also stored in the blockchain. And because it's immutable, you, it, it becomes what's called a ledger. Uh, and a uh, ledger is something like a, a, a bookkeeping software. You know, it's um, usually when you have a transaction in your business, you add that to your ledger. And it's the same with the blockchain. And the funny thing is that you can't change it afterwards. You can correct it, but you can't change it. There's a difference. Yeah, you can correct it. But adding a correction to the database, to the blockchain. Um, so um, it's, it's funny st stuff. And it, it, so you don't, but you, you, you can add transactions but you can also add files. So if I add a file to the blockchain, it gets uh, verified and signed by the previous block. So even also then, I cannot change a document once it's added to the blockchain. 
Now that becomes interesting. So the basic idea was, okay, so suppose I use a blockchain as a, as a general ledger. It's just an append-only database. It's secure. It can be distributed. That's the, the, the funny thing about distributed is that uh, if somebody says, no, my version is the truth, you, you can have software uh, deciding which one is because well, it's verifiable. And um, if I now use GPG, which is also open source, and everybody knows it, I, I didn't even have to explain it. Um, if I use that to, to sign documents with a signature of somebody and um, add that to the blockchain, it's basically I add signed documents to a blockchain. That's it. That's it. That's, that's all. If you understand that, you can go away. That's all my, my talk's about. Um, so I looked around and I picked uh, multi-chain as an open source blockchain software. Uh, you can download it and you can play around with it. It's, it's fun. Um, and um, so I thought, well, this is, th this could be the future of public documents. Well, maybe not this application, you will see the application. It's a proof of concept. It's not something that you will see in production anytime soon. Um, but I think that's the way to go forward. I think because the, the signature that we are using today is handwritten. Everybody can make a photo of it, can copy it digitally, can uh, recreate it. So it, 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 it's not really that secure. I mean, give me one of your signatures, I'll, I'll practice it for a couple of minutes and I'll just draw the same signature. And who's to know? So you want in this day and age where everything is turning digital, you also want a verifiable signature. And the, the nice thing with GPG signatures is that you can use a name and an email address as, as, as an identification uh, with also, of course, a key attached to it. And you can upload those to key servers so your public key becomes uh, common knowledge. And you can even have your key signed by somebody else. So you can add authority to your key. Um, so if uh, some judge says, okay, uh, I'll, I'll create a digital key, I work at, uh, at uh, the judicial department or ministry, uh, and by the way, I have my key uh, emailed or I go with a USB stick, whatever, you need a process for that in the end. But you go to, let's say, the king, and the king signs your key, then everybody can verify that your key is your key because it's signed by, for what we consider, ultimate authority. And maybe the king is not the best, but you, you get the picture. Um, and then he can use that key to sign documents to, to say, okay, this is uh, my verdict for this case, and I digitally sign this verdict. And then I publicize it because our verdicts in the Netherlands are public. Uh, the same goes for notaries, the same goes for even for uh, uh, people working in a community uh, in City Hall uh, who are registering birth. Uh, they also get a, a, an official key and they sign the birth certificate of some person. Uh, and then you add that to the blockchain, it gets distributed by whoever is interested in it. Uh, within the blockchain, for instance, multi-chain, you can define streams. So you could uh, create a new stream every year, and somebody can subscribe to this year's stream uh, because he's interested, or he wants to do research for it, or he just wants to check some stuff. Um, so well, that's basically it. Anybody have any questions about this idea at the moment? So that's pretty clear, right? So it's, um, it's demo time. Now, you know how demos go. They work at home. So I'm going to start fiddling on this laptop. But you know, it's a demo. And the gods of demos have a funny sense of humor. Um. Okay. Um, I, 
Have you tried the new Firefox? Not yet? You should. I hated it. I love it though. It, and all in 24 hours. Um, okay. Um, so I, I, I built this proof of concept software in Python using Flask as a, as a um, very simple um, uh, URL to code uh, mapping. And I've just, it's just one file, but several endpoints in HTML. Uh, there's no styling. It, it looks horrible, but it works. Uh, well, it worked at home. Um, no matter. Localhost. Yeah. Okay, so um, you see nothing. That's interesting. Um, now, I've just updated to the latest Ubuntu, and normally I know how to change the screen to, to, to mirror uh, both. Uh, let's see how that works over here. <laughs> Anybody any idea? Show on position. Oh wait, out of height, out of size. Show on. Alle schermen. Dat lijkt erop. Ja, oh wacht, it's, it's just a docker only. Hmm. Almost there, I guess. Um, I want a mirror. Um, Is it text only sessie of the graphics iets? I just want to mirror the. Th th this is the demo effect. Uh, this is clearly. Als je een tekst wil, kun je gewoon twee screens starten. Wat? Screen en dan nog een keer screen op de andere. Screen en nog een keer screen. I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> and I, I and I should. Hey, schermen. Okay, yeah. Mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. Apply. Apply. And we have lift off. Okay. I told you about the demo effect. You were warned. Okay, so uh, it's very small. Um, control, shift, zoom. Yeah, right? That's, it, it's readable, it's the menu. So uh, I, I even have an admin page, and I start uh, my, my blockchain software. So it takes some time, and it should work. It normally, it works. Yeah, it's running. OK. So I can uh, ask for some information, and I get a balance of zero, which is because I don't store transactions. Um, uh, no monetary transactions, but uh, uh, some stuff. I'll, I can maybe make it a little smaller. Yeah, that's uh, about better, I guess. Okay, so, um, and the rest of the menu <laughs> um, is the application. So, first, what happened, what I've, I've built a sort of a, a workflow, and the workflow is very basic. You have a, a secretary, and she gets uh, a, the, the, the job of make sure the judge signs a document. So she gets a stack of documents, and she needs to upload them into the system, hence the upload. Then after she has uploaded the, the documents into the system, basically, of course, the files get into some directory. Uh, she needs to assign uh, a document to a person because one or more persons, uh, curly one, but it should be any, huh? uh, persons need to sign that document. Um, and then she's done. Now, the next moment, the judge logs into the system with his user ID, password, whatever, and he gets presented the documents he needs to sign. So that's why there is the option sign. 
And at the end there's check, and check is for somebody to see, okay, so what, what did we store? What did we store into the blockchain and can I verify the signature? So basically, understand, any, any questions? Nah. Okay, so, um, oh, by the way, what I, did, I also added a very small SQL database, but that's just for the queuing. You know, when you uh, assign a document to a person, um, and a person has a hash from his uh, GPG key, that's combined with the document name into a very small queue, which you can see um, if I do the get info, and I go down to Alphabet Street, uh, database. Yeah? I've already tested it, as you can see, there is the insert into sign queue values with a hash and a, a, a document name. Uh, document name, very small. Okay. Um, so, upload. Now, uh, let's uh, upload some document, I don't know. Uh, this is a document, I don't care. Upload. So, now I have two documents in the system, right? Um, and the secretary says, okay, I'm going to assign. Now, uh, there's this list of the uploaded documents. Anybody, any particular favor to make it random? No, okay. So I'll take the first document, and uh, uh, that's a GPG-1 PNG, and I add who needs to sign. I say, well, this person needs to sign. Uh, it's very simple. Now we, I've got a local uh, GPG uh, key value st uh, key store, um, and uh, well, user test two has password test two. It's very okay. So document has been added to the sign queue. Um, if I go to get info, well, guess what? I see that in the sign queue. Yeah, now two records with, in this case, the, sa the, the same hash, but also with another document, right? Um, so at some point in time, uh, select a user for which to show work to be done. And the button below says, um, Select this user, yes I know, should be through authentication, but this is a POC, goddammit, right? Um, so I said I want to see the documents for user 2. Now, click on the sign button for the document. Okay, I want to sign the GPG document. Um, test 2, sign and store. Ah, test 2. And I have a transaction added to the blockchain. So now the document is added to the blockchain, it's immutable, you can't change it. Oh, and I've signed the original file with a GPG signature. And the funny thing is that I can uh, now reload this page because I've, you know, it's, it's an HTML form, so there are hidden posted, uh, post uh, data. So if I reload this page, it, it does it again, opnieuw. And I get another transaction, so I've added the document two times, right? Very simple. Okay, so let's check what we've done. Okay, what, what do you want to check? Well, we want to check uh, uh, this document. Yeah, there are two versions, so which one do you want to check? Because I've got two uh, transactions stored in the blockchain. I'll pick the first one, I don't care. And he says, yeah, I verified it and uh, the signature has been made on that date with that uh, 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 key, and it's an ultimate uh, 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 good signature. Which, yeah, and behind the scenes I have extracted the data from uh, the blockchain. But yeah, you have to believe my word for that at the moment, where you can see the code. Eh? But I could also make, of course, an HTML lookalike that doesn't do anything, but this actually works. Trust me. Or don't, and look at the code. Right, um, and um, well, it, it turns out that Flask is 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 very uh, funny uh, stuff. It's very easy in Python Flask to uh, make a for for handler. So that was the second thing I did, and um, it should work. And it doesn't at the moment. This is a little bit this. No, oh. that's not nice. Um, so anyway, that doesn't work at the moment. Have to fix that. 
Um, so, that's it, clearly, basically. Any questions? Oh, right. Um, I have this. Nope, not this. Weg. Hop. Boom, boom, boom. Percent. Percent. Any questions? Ah, yes. There's a microphone coming. One moment. Well, if you have a blockchain infrastructure um, and you have several users of one blockchain, how do you synchronize uh, additions to the same blockchain so that not uh, two different users add the same document uh, to the end? of the same blockchain, two different documents? Yes, um, that's a good question, but that's really something that the blockchain itself handles. So um, uh, the blockchain software, they don't trust each other. So uh, when you synchronize with another blockchain server, there is some uh, protocol exchange where you have to prove um, uh, that uh, your addition is, um, is valid. And um, they, uh, I think that in the transaction they use both uh, a timestamp and some randomizer together with the uh, ID of uh, that specific uh, um, uh, blockchain server. At least that's what I would have do. Would do. And, um, and then they, they exchange continuously with each other. Do you have new editions? Oh, I have new editions. And you have to subscribe to them. And you have to have credentials to be allowed to subscribe. So you can subscribe as a listener, but you can also subscribe as a, uh, that you can also supply, in which case they sync both uh, ways. Uh, so it's, it's pretty st uh, fancy stuff. And, and for me as an uh, outside programmer, it just works. No, you don't. It's a distributed ledger system blockchain. So it's a distributed solution. There's no central point. No single point of failure. No, no single point of failure. Because if you had a single point of failure, you could lose all your documents and your archive. So that's that's why a blockchain is so very interesting. Um, uh, it's it's backed up by the rest of the world. Everybody who's interested, everybody who subscribed to it. So what you ha will have. Uh, in the future, I guess, is you will have a server within, within City Hall where you add your uh, documents to. And then that has a firewall, through a firewall, uh, a synchronization uh, connection to some uh, um, uh, bunker somewhere in, in the last week. We have several very high security uh, um, government uh, data uh, sites. And uh, they just synchronize the data there, and, but you can also synchronize it as a citizen. That's what makes it so interesting. You don't have to trust uh, anybody. The case itself only contains, uh, say, the hashes of the documents, not the documents uh, themselves. Yeah, also the documents itself. Also the, uh, yes. Anybody else? Questions? Well, considering that the price of storing a document on a chain is going to be, maybe it will go slower with the hard disk size as well, um, or the hard disk space costs, but uh, have you considered other formats other than PNG and JPEG? Um, well, uh, JPEG is just a is test file. You can, uh, uh, with, with this, uh, with my software, the extension or the type of the, the file that you add is, is of no importance. If you want to uh, add a, a database dump or a, a Word document or a LibreOffice document, or it's completely, I don't care. And, uh, and in the end, yes, if, if you uh, uh, add all the documents that uh, uh, Will the the 
market, not for the software, but the, the, the market for the usage of this kind of application is enormous. So yes, there will be, be a, a, a big amount of data generated uh, with signed documents, stored, but it's, it's archival, so they archive now as well. And um, uh, yeah, it, it will become a, a pretty big uh, change. So that's why I think it's interesting to to divide it by year, for instance, and then subscribe to yearly editions. Do you know that in Switzerland they're already running this stuff for years? Sorry, what? In Canton Suk, they've been running multi-chain for years. They already, in Canton Suk, in Switzerland, they already sign the keys of okay. people, normal people. Mm -hmm. you go to the city hall and get your keys signed, verified with mm -hmm. your real life ID to a digital ID signed by the governmental authority uh -huh. with which key you can actually do this. And in Denmark they've been doing this, the same thing for years. Have you investigated other already? No, right no, it, it, this was a pr more proof of concept at the moment. So I needed something to sign. I know there are other si signature uh, solutions out there. Um, and I just it was a, a combination of the, of, of the concepts. So you have the concept of the blockchain, and you have the concept of the digital signature. You don't have to use GPG, you can use any other. If you go to Switzerland, Denmark, you use your own signing software. But again, the signed document gets added to the blockchain and is then archived through rep replication. Um, uh, and I, I, I know that there are other countries uh, ahead of uh, of us, uh, I, I think that at the moment so Estonia is a lighting example of, uh, of how far you can do things digitally. Um, and, um, you know, I was involved in 2001 to build for the, the Dutch city of The Hague the first citizen mm -hmm. authentication solution. So that was before the existence of what we in the Netherlands called uh, digi, g, digital ID, DigiID. How do you say DigiDay in, in the English? I have no. DigiDay, anyway. So in the Netherlands we have DigiDay, but uh, there was a time uh, in history that it did, didn't exist. And uh, so the, the year before I developed that for the city of The Hague. As, and, and they used it. And uh, at the end my solution evolved to uh, authentication, pro uh, authentication proxy for DigiDay. Digi digi <laughs> for Hagi Day, which was the predecessor, and uh, at the end also for the healthcare with uh, the Uzi Pass. But that's a whole different story. Okay. Any more questions? You, you had a question, sir? Good morning. Uh, my name is Jos van der Duvel. I work for the Dutch Publication Office. Uh, so I'm quite familiar with the current process of uh, publishing, which is very unlike what you presented here. Mm -hmm. uh, so the digital siding is very nice. Um, I wonder a bit, you have a blockchain, it's distributed. So can, any, can anybody add documents? And if you allow everybody to add documents, how do, you ensure, how do you ensure the consistency of the complete collection of documents? For yeah. Example, yeah. Okay, so, um, well, what you do is, um, uh, the, 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 the blockchain software has its own user management for, for subscribing servers. So as a city, you could, could publicize, uh, these are the credentials, IP address, user ID, password, for uh, read-only access. Uh, if you trust another city and you say, we want to synchronize our data, uh, you just make a, a right connection to another city. Um, so that's a way to, um, uh, to handle that not everybody can add stuff to the blockchain. But in the end, even if they could, all they do is add a file to a blockchain, but um, the, the, the crux is that these documents are signed with a digital key that has been authorized by what we consider to be the ultimate authority. Uh, so you, you have to create a process like they do in Switzerland or in Denmark or Iceland or whatever, where you say, okay, uh, this is my USB key or what, I upload what that 
is also what you can do. You can upload your key to a key server. That's, that's common uh, uh, functionality in GPG. And um, you go somewhere and you say to the other, look, this is my key. This, I vouch that this key with this hash is my key. Whereupon the ultimate authority will sign your key. And then everybody can see because your key is public. But the password uh, is, is not public, of course. Yeah, that's, it, it's, it, it works with um, um, a, a, a public and a, and a private key combined. So um, when you, as a person, sign a document, you unlock your key by supplying the credentials for the secret key part. And then you can sign the document. So even if all security would fail, and somebody else, I, I pick you as a random person, would add a document to the blockchain, he still cannot assign it with a valid key. And what you do is, um, with, with GPE key management, you also say that, you, uh, that your key has, uh, at the moment that you sign it, you should say it's got a lifetime of two or one or two or three years. So if you forget your password, you generate a new key. Um, your old key at some point will just be too old for the world to see on this, this key is outdated. There is a newer key. And, but again, you need to go to the ultimate authority to have him co-sign your key. Does that explain your question? Well, <clears throat> not quite. What I mean by validity is that the documents that, uh, at least the, the central public documents like laws and uh, notes from parliament, they are uh, initially XML files which adhere to a specific XML schema uh -huh. and they have metadata which should be valid. And uh, what we see in practice that different authorities when they publish stuff, sometimes they, have, they, they try to publish invalid documents at which point they have to be rejected and then they have to try again. So, uh, if there's no central authority to validate the documents, how would you solve that? Um, yes, that's what you, in, in my idea, would do with the signature. So, at some point, the signature states uh, that this document is valid. Um, the, the blockchain, is, at the moment, the blockchain software is, for me, limited because I would like to be able to, uh, to add uh, an uh, unlimited amount of tags to uh, uh, an addition to a transaction. Like uh, the daytime date, it's added, and the, the name is added. So if you have a process where you use document names, document numbers, then you can use that as a name. But you should be able to add more tags, uh, which is at the moment with this, well, maybe it will grow. This is a release 1.0, so it's, it's early. Um, um, but uh, what I showed you also is that you can have multiple versions of the same document. So it, it, it begs the reason that um, the latest version is probably the, the most valid one, the, 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 the most accurate one. So even if you make a failure while when uploading a document and you sign it with an, a good key so people think this is the truth, well, at that time, it is the truth, but later um, people say, oh, we forgot something, or we want to add some tags, or whatever. You upload it again, and you see in time uh, that there is a more recent version, so probably that's the, the, the best one, uh, uh, version to have. Does that answer great? Okay, great. But it's, it's nice to have somebody in the audience who is in this, because I'm just an IT guy with an ID, and uh, this is not my work, so it's... Interesting to, to have somebody here about that. Um, okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell a bit about uh, scalability? Because um, when I uh, hear blockchain, well, first thing I, that comes to my mind is uh, Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is um, uh, calculated that if everybody in the world uh, would have a, a wallet, um, there could be like three transactions per person in a lifetime because of the, the problems of scalability. Yeah, um, so uh, my, my guess would be that there is um, room for more than one currency in the whole world, like it is today. 
So um, um, it, it, again, I, I would say that you would have a Dutch Bitcoin equivalent and a German and a Belgium and whatever, and maybe some several more. So you don't have to synchronize the whole world. Um, but this is a much more limited uh, usage of blockchain. Uh, it's in data. It's 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 a lot. I mean, you can't do. There's a lot of documents being generated, but um, the amount of transactions is not unlimited. There is no trading involved. There is there are, there are no algorithms who compare uh, one uh, Bitcoin uh, um, exchange rate to another to decide. Oh, now I want to make a transaction to win. Uh, to make a profit of 0 0.111, 0 0.00001 cent. Well, it's not a cent, Bitcoin cent, you know. Um, so, um, I, at the moment, I wouldn't worry that much about scalability. I think that will be safe for the time being. And, um, like I said, because what you can do in, in multi-chain, you can define streams. So, if you define a stream for every year, and it's just like bookkeeping where you say, oh, listen, uh, the year 2017 is, is gone. So now we start with 2018 and 2019. You can subscribe to all the hours, uh, to all the years if you like, but you can also say, no, just give me the current year. Okay, any more questions? Uh, to expand upon uh, the problem of validation would be, um, useful to have some kind of multi-step signing. So uh, someone uh, publishes a document and it has to be validated by another authority and then they also sign and only then it's a real yeah. valid document. Yeah, but that's something that you can do with PG. I didn't, uh, I, I thought of it, but because well, I had limited time uh, um, uh, to develop this uh, proof of concept code, uh, you can already select uh, multiple users that need to sign one document because like you say it's possible you can have a chain but you can also say I just want it to have signed by two persons and it doesn't have to be uh, one before the other uh, but maybe it, it should so yeah you can um, if I, I would really like to uh, rebuild this and add a, a workflow engine to it and one of the workflows you would define is time differentiated signatures and where you say okay first that one then that one then that one and after that it's valid and then I upload it but before that you have to realize that is not yet added to the blockchain so it's not official it's just a file on a server with some stuff in a, a small queue in the database or in an application but it's signed so even as soon as the first person signs the document, the document becomes unmutable because the, the signature of the document depends on the digital contents of the document. So as soon as one person signs it, it's uh, not possible to, um, to, to, to change it, to corrupt it, to whatever. Any more questions? Well, then I thank you for your... Oh, sorry, yeah. So far, when I've been thinking about how to solve the problem of uh, having immutable documents, a chain of immutable documents, as a developer, my default go-to would be signing commits in Git. And uh, there you can have branches, so if Parliament is still deciding on a law, it's not final yet, they can work in a branch until the branch is finalized, until they vote on it. It's not on the main chain. Could you have such a workflow uh, in this proposal as well. Are you the one, uh, uh, I wrote, I, I read an article last week, uh, somebody proposing to do uh, a lawmaking in the Netherlands based on a Git workflow. Is that is it, is it you who thought of that? Uh, yes. <laughs> ah, cool, well, great, yes. Well, but I'm not the first one who thinks of this. I mean, people outside of the Netherlands have been publishing uh, ideas. Yeah, but it, it's, it makes so much sense. To, to use Git for, for the workflow, it, it, but it does, you should use ASCII, of course, and not uh, a Word document or LibreOffice. Well, LibreOffice you can if you use the raw format with the XML code, not the zip file. Um, but yeah, it's um, uh, where I see my solution is at the end of that process. When you say it's time to publicize 
uh, and make it make it official and um, uh, store and archive it for well eternity eternity for how long that may be uh, you never know okay any more questions no more questions and going once going twice okay thank you for your attention